Welcome back to Power Lunch. Well, starting from Friday, workplace productivity is likely to take a knock as South Africans across the country focus on the Soccer World Cup, which lasts a month. So what can employers expect and what measures should they take to ensure that some work still gets done and they don't break the law with illegal gambling? To answer all of that, I'm joined by Eva Moodley, an attorney at commercial law firm Bowman Gilfillan. Eva, thanks for coming in today. No productivity likely to be a bit under strain. A lot of matches during normal work, working hours. Do you think employers have to be a little bit lenient during this period? Most definitely. Um, I think work with flexibility in the workplace is going to be good for workplace morale. But at the same time, we need to ensure that those flexible working arrangements are not counterproductive. Um, and employees are likely to face high levels of absenteeism. Mm -hmm. And I would in, you know, encourage employers to investigate those before taking any decisions and disciplining the employee concerned. Do you think the employer should actually set down the rules before the whole tournament begins and says, well, if you want to spend an afternoon at the football, you have to come in and make up that time at another point? Yes, I think that definitely clear communication to the workforce is ideal uh, because it, ad it avoids any doubt. But uh, yeah, I mean, that I would encourage that. Okay, but you say if employ employees suddenly start calling in sick every time Bafana Bafana plays, that action should be uh, that, taken. That's going to be problematic. I mean, employers are likely to see increased in incidents of late coming in the workplace, abscondment, and I think in some cases they will be justified. If empl employees are living close to um, um, stadiums, then um, there may be traffic delays. Traffic could be a nightmare. Yes, so I mean, how, how do you balance the, the sometimes conflicting needs of the business with the passion of your soccer-loving workforce? I think, it, I think it is very difficult, but uh, you, uh, you know, we're encouraging our clients to take time out now and think about ways they can manage this properly. Um, you, know, you need to obviously run your business during this time as well so yeah so the job still needs to get, get done. done definitely well we were chatting on yesterday's program just about gambling or uh, particularly internet gambling we've seen a number of internet gambling companies setting up shop in south africa yes. ahead of the world cup trying to get some of that money that's going to be flittered about during the the the, the, the games and uh, of course there's also little pools within companies where employees put on bets with one another is that legal or are you allowed to do that yes you are but there's certain requirements that need to be met. Um, an office pool that's being conducted by the employer or employees in the workplace need to comply with the um, Lotteries Act and the provisions of that act. Um, it needs to fall within the definition of a private lottery and there's certain requirements that need to be met. In terms of ticket price, um, the tickets must not be sold for more than 10 rand and the pot of money must not exceed 10,000 rand and obviously tickets, the sale of tickets should only be advertised internally within the workplace. So that's a kind of general rule for general one of these rule. informal workplace lotteries yes. and of course nobody should really benefit from it so you shouldn't perhaps um, gain, gain yourself for organizing a, a pool within yes, an office. Yes, it, it shouldn't be, yes, without remuneration most definitely. Um, yeah. So it'd probably be advisable for employers to take a look at that now before the game starts and just make sure that anything that is being conducted is being conducted legally and really letting employees know about that. Yes, um, I mean in terms of the Lotteries Act, it's, in, it's an offence to obviously um, commit uh, or conduct a lottery in violation of the provisions of the legislation. So if a lottery is being conducted or private lottery is being conducted that's not in compliance with that legislation we would advise that the, the, um, the um, employer halt, halt sales of the tickets. And of course with gambling and football comes beer <laughs> and you're likely to get a few more um, inebriated or hungover employ employees coming in. Again, should employers be a little bit lenient in this regard or should they also set down the rules about drinking and coming to work when you perhaps are under the influence? I think employers should set down the rules and you know, into being intoxicated while at work is, is dangerous, especially if you uh, the environment you work on, if, if you're working uh, and operating heavy machinery or, or driving a company car, that, c that could be dangerous. So I think you need, the employers need to lay down the, the law in that regard. It's a difficult one to prove though. Are you allowed to test your employees for, 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 for drinking? Are you allowed to give them breathalyzers? Um, I often see in contracts of employment clauses that state uh, you agree to uh, subject yourself to a breathalyzer and those are not enforceable clauses uh, and an employer would need to get the informed consent of the employee at the time of administering such a test. And if they don't get that, that consent? 
um, then I mean if the employee refuses um, to take the test then there's certain negative inferences that can be drawn but it's a tricky area of our law and I would suggest employers take legal advice before going down that route. So something the HR department really needs to brush no. up on. Yes. <laughs> um, so perhaps just f uh, some advice for companies as we head into the World Cup. Um, you need to get the job done. What yes. should they be doing to make sure that the job does get done despite all the festivities? I think um, clear communication to employees is vital. If you know your, your, your workforce needs to know what's going to happen, what's going to be allowed and what's not going to be allowed. I mean, obviously employers are going to want to be flexible and want to manage the passion within the workforce around uh, you know, the, the, the World Cup. But you need to, we need to ensure that that's not counterproductive. Have you bought your tickets yet? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Eva, thank you very much for coming to the studio today to share that.